science fiction in China, at least in the 20th century, is really a foreign import. China has its own tradition of fantasy fiction, but this group of writers that we're looking at now actually grew up on American science fiction. Not quite counting Liu Cixin, Three Body Problem, because he's an earlier generation who grew up during the Cultural Revolution. But the way that science fiction has developed in China since his great success with his trilogy is really the younger writers who are the one child generation. They grew up reading American science fiction on the Golden Age, so on and so forth. Now, in terms of what it says about China now and why is science fiction so popular, that has not always been the case. Science fiction actually went through several waves, um, several points of ups and downs in the course of 20th century. It was banned on several occasions in the late 70s and early 80s under the rubric of spiritual pollution from the West. So the conflict between science fiction and China's state directive has not always been there. So it's really kind of a renegade genre that now just happens to have a spotlight because of China's drive for science and technology, which has been going on since the 50s, but now taken to new heights. That said, the most important thing for sci-fi writers is still having the room to create and to think freely without necessarily holding too closely to the state vision for science technology. But so far, so good. There seems to be a mutually beneficial relationship. One change in recent times is last August, the Chinese government put out 10 guidelines for science fiction industry. And this was quite impactful because obviously, if anything else, it confirms the fact that Chinese science fiction has caught the state's attention. But what they're interested in fostering is not just fiction per se, but the entire genre as an industry, replete with movie scripts, different forms of IP, gaming, uh, but the big focus in these 10 guidelines actually film industry, including trading writers, screenplays, the whole mechanism of converting fiction into film, so on and so forth. We're actually at a very exciting period where we're not sure what's going to happen to Chinese science fiction in the next several years. Hopefully what writers will just simply have the time they need to write and to create. Sci-fi is a really interesting case within the Chinese film industry. It's been very successful domestically. So the Chinese market has really excelled and generated a lot of income through sci-fi films. For example, a recent film, The Wandering Earth, took in over $600 million in the box office domestically. Now, the interesting thing is, while there has been some interest in distributing the film globally, as well as other Chinese films, there is a hesitancy about wide global uptake of Chinese sci-fi films because a lot of them have very nationalistic themes. There is another side of this, which is that the increased robustness of the Chinese domestic film market through things like the Chinese sci-fi landscape means that the Chinese film market has more power relative to Hollywood than previous years. So there's less dependence on Hollywood studios for being able to supply key tech roles, for example, because there's an ample supply of that now within the Chinese film industry. So there is a power, a power shift that's occurring as a result of the Chinese sci-fi industry. When we look at the field of Chinese sci-fi and speculative fiction and how it connects to Chinese culture, society, everyday people, I think we have to think about a country's literature is not a monolith. So just like writers of any other cultural background, a Chinese writer of sci-fi or speculative fiction is not going to think of themselves as speaking for the country or culture. And while some works may touch on social critique or engage with visions of the future or shed light on China's rapid technological growth and development, I think most authors are also just trying to tell a good story. And so we have to think about their individual interests and intentions and look at this question, I think, in terms of individual authors and individual works and what do they perhaps say about Chinese society and everyday people. As Chinese speculative fiction becomes better known in English and more widely translated, there's an opportunity for it to be in conversation with and expand non-Chinese readers' understanding of not just Chinese culture or society, but also just people's understanding of the genres themselves and to kind of shed light on what science fiction and fantasy fiction and different types of speculative fiction, what can they be? And expand the genre writing that's available in English and offer different perspectives on genre conventions and storytelling tropes. 
For me, as a Chinese Canadian writer and translator, I think the power of reading speculative fiction and translation is it can expose readers to fantastical worlds, imaginative situations, future possibilities that exist beyond the world we live in.